Welcome back. Get the old dude again. So in the last video, Andy showed you about built-in functions. So he showed you that you can type expressions like 5 plus round of 2.8, OK, 2.7. And what you get out of that is 8, because round of 2.7 evaluates to 3, and 5 plus 3 is 8. So this is a function call to a built-in function. So what we're going to do in this video is show you how you can write your own functions. In order to do that, though, I have to first of all show you how you can write simple programs. So far, all we've been doing is typing into this thing down here, the shell. This is sort of like a simple calculator. It doesn't store anything. You can't come back and reuse what you did today. You can't use it again tomorrow and so on. So that's where we move up into this window for the first time. So I'm going to get, use the file menu. I'm going to say new. And this is creating a program. And I'm going to type in a very simple program. There it is. It's kind of similar to a program that Andy showed you earlier. My age is 10, his age is my age plus 1. It includes an extra thing we haven't shown you before, which is a call to a function called print. This is a third statement, print his age. Print's an old-fashioned term. In the good old days of uh, computers, terminals were electric typewriters, essentially, and when you wanted to see the result of a calculation, you had to print it on the typewriter. Nowadays, the word display or show would make more sense, but the old term sticks around. This is a program. It's got three related lines. First of all, you have to do that. If you don't do that, it won't know what my age is, so it won't be able to work out his age, and if you haven't done that, it won't be able to print it. So there's a program. I can save it. I'm going to save it, and I'm going to call it prog. Say it in a folder called junk. You probably want to save things in a more useful place. And then with that, I can now run it. This button up here I'm about to click is called the run button. So when I run it, it computes this answer for me, very complex calculation, of 11. So that's a program in a nutshell. And that, by the way, was that slide there. We've used the window editing frame. We've saved the contents as a file. We've run it. We could come back and edit it tomorrow and reuse it. So this is programming in the most simple sense, a program being a sequence of statements. So Shell is great. Do use it frequently to try out your ideas. This is programming. And there's just something I want to mention. There's an important difference here. When I went, to, <laughs> when I went print his age, you might think, well, I didn't need to go print. I could have just done his age. Let's try that. Nothing happened. No output. The reason is that if I was down here and go his age, it evaluates the expression and displays the result. In a program, it doesn't do that. If I want to actually see something, the value of an expression, I have to explicitly print it. So that is necessary. That's a, a little bit of a trap, the difference between life in the shell and life in a program. Right, so that's our first program. Let's move on. We're now in a position to define new functions. What I wish to do is to define an exciting new function called square, which is going to allow me to work out things like 9 times 9, which is the square of 9. It comes to 81. So I want to be able to do square of 9, but if I try that, it says builtins.nameError square is not defined. That's because there isn't a function called square. But there will be real soon now. So I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to start defining a new function. And I'm going to do that by saying def, which stands for define. Notice it went nice, capital bold, blue. Def, square, that's the name of the function. And then I have to say what the parameters are. I'll explain this in a bit more detail in a minute. The parameters are in a list enclosed in parentheses. And then I have to have a colon. After the colon, when I hit enter, wing indents by four spaces. This is really critical. In Python, indentation really matters. So now what's happening is that I'm going to say what the actual definition, the body of the, defi of the square function is. And it's a very simple body. It's going to say return, that is, give me back the answer, x times x. No matter what x is, return the square of it. That is a program that defines a function square. Let's run it. What happens when I run it? 
A bit disappointing, really, nothing. But, actually, something. What happens now if I go square 9 is I get told it's 81. So by running a function to define a square, I can now use it. Normally we don't operate that way, we normally test it inside the actual program. So I go print square of 9. Notice I have to go print, just as I showed you a minute ago. If I just go square of 9, nothing will happen because expressions are not printed out inside programs, only in the shell. So I do that, run that, and it prints 81. Whoopie-doo, I'm on a winner here. Print the square of some rather more complex number, and that works too. tells me that that's what it is when I've squared it. So this statement here is a special sort of statement called a return statement, which tells me what the answer is from the function. This thing is called a parameter, and this thing is, the, is called the argument. It's the value I wish to give to the parameter. So this thing says, for any x, the square of x is defined as x times x, and this says I want the square of a particular value called the argument. So here's an analogy for you. You can think of functions as being like recipes in a cookbook. Old-fashioned things, cookbooks. Here's some recipes, three of them. Boil an egg. The recipe to boil an egg says, half fill a saucepan with cold water, place the egg in the water, put the saucepan on the stove, with the elements, blah, 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 boil it for three minutes and remove the egg. Right, a recipe. Here's another recipe, a recipe to boil a potato. Half fill a saucepan with cold water, place the potato in the water, Put the saucepan on the stove, blah, 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 boil for 20 minutes, remove the potato, and similarly for boiling a boot for three days. You may realise the only difference between all these recipes is the actual food and the duration. So we can replace that with a generic recipe, which is for boiling anything, and it has parameters, food and duration. And it says, half fill a saucepan with cold water. Place food, whatever the food value is, whatever the argument is in the water. Whoops, sorry. Put the saucepan on the stove, blah, blah. Boil it for duration, remove the food. And I've added another line in here just for clarification. I've said return food. This is the output, if you like, the result of using this particular recipe. Something comes out of it, which is food. It has a return value. So now we can say, instead of having those three separate recipes, we can boil an egg for three minutes, boil a potato for 20, boil a boot for three days. This is more flexible. It can deal with any sort of food, and you could have a hard-boiled egg for five minutes, soft-boiled for three, potatoes, depends how you like your potatoes, and so on. How do you like your boots? I don't know. Just a slight sidetrack, the question of what is the type of the parameter. You may think, well, I've, I've called it with integers here. Remember I introduced the, or Andy introduced the concept of type. What happens if I go print the square of 23.5? The function worked with integers. Does it work with floats? Well, yes, it does. 6.25 is the answer. So it works with both integers and floats, and in fact, it works with anything for which that is legitimate. And that's called duck typing. You don't, don't need to worry too much about that. Notice that if I were to go print the square of this thing, we haven't really introduced yet, but it's not too hard. Oops. Print the square of four written with quotes around it, which is something called a string, and we'll talk about that real soon next week. If I do that and run it, the first three lines work fine. There they are, 81, some long number, 6.25, but then it all blows up. This is called an exception. We'll talk about these later, much later. But and it's pretty confusing at the moment, but I'd like you to try and understand it anyway. The last line tells you what went wrong. It's a built-in type error. That is, this thing is not of a type which can be used in that expression. That bit's too confusing, don't worry about that, it's just saying it's doesn't work. And above that is some important stuff that you should get used to reading. These bits here are the traceback, and notice it's the most recent call last. So the thing blew up on this last line, line 2 in the module, return x times x. There's the offending line, but earlier it essentially went wrong at line 7, where it tried printing the square of 4. 
So you can say that there's errors in two places. This is an error, but it goes wrong when you get into that point. So this traceback idea is quite important. Please try to read your error messages rather than just asking the tutors in the lab what's going on. You'll learn a lot from reading error messages. And that's all I have in time for in this video. I'll tell you a bit more about functions in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.